Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard of Resonators. On this week's YouTube video, we're going to answer the question that you see probably mostly on the Facebook pages and stuff. Somebody will buy a resonator and then they'll ask, how do you amplify these things? I think there are three main ways. With a microphone, capturing the acoustic sound. With an acoustic pickup built into the guitar, going out to a PA system or an electromagnetic pickup, which might go to a PA system or an actual guitar amplifier. The video is going to be in two halves. In the first half, we'll just discuss what the systems are, the pros and the cons. In the second half, I've got um, a PA system, a guitar amplifier, microphone set up here in my music room. We're going to try each style so you can hear the differences. The first way which will give you a very natural sound is to use a microphone. Um, now, I have here a Shure SM57, which is a very good way of doing it. If you're kind of a bit more kind of technically savvy with kind of equipment, you may want to think about a small diaphragm condenser microphone because they can impart a little bit more maybe detail to the sound. Uh, but they're harder to set up, you need phantom power, so they're, and, and they're more feedback prone. So if you sit down to play, um, you don't move around the stage, the microphone is a good option for you. Also, you might have a beautiful old vintage resonator like this 31 trillion. You don't want to start drilling the side of it for a pickup to come out of and stuff like that. So you just want to keep the instrument nice and kind of original. The microphone's a good bet. One of the issues with the microphone is that you can get feedback, especially if you're playing to like loud, noisy audiences or you're in small bars and small rooms. Sometimes it's hard to get the microphone loud enough. Another issue can be that um, if you face a microphone at a particular part of a resonator, the sound changes hugely. That is because if you imagine that a resonator produces a range of frequencies, then you point a microphone, say, at the cone, you only pick up a smaller part of those frequencies. If you place the microphone at the, at the F holes, you get a smaller part of the frequencies, more like the bass response. So to get the best out of the sound, you probably want to be looking at uh, getting the microphone quite far away so that it captures all, all of the kind of elements. So the second kind is the acoustic style pickup. Um, in this case, here is my National Resophonic Style O, and I have a Highlander system, which is built into the wooden um, biscuit, as you might call it, where the strings go over. Um, there are other companies that produce these kind of pickups, Shatton, uh, Fishman, loads of others, that's easy to find. So the idea is, is that the, the, the pickup picks up the vibrations of the strings, sends them out as a fairly clean signal to a PA system, and it's an approximation of an, like a kind of acoustic sound. These pickups are voiced to sound as much like a microphone as possible. Is it the same? Not quite. But the advantages are that, first of all, with the washboard resonators, we do walk around the stage a lot and we have little routines that we do. So I can move around, I'm not stuck to a microphone. Also, with this kind of pickup, you can get a lot more volume before the chance of, you, of getting feedback. Sometimes we play festivals where there's, you know, we're sandwiched between rock bands and heavy bands. So we can go on and uh, get the volume in the PA system to you know, a good level that competes with these systems. Some people kind of think of these as not sounding very authentic. I personally think I get a very nice sound. I use a little preamp, which actually I've just produced a video about, which I might do a link there or there. Um, but yeah, my preamp allows me just to sort of notch out little frequencies. So if you get the kind of quacky, kind of pickup kind of sound, if you know what I mean, you can just sort of dial it out and make it sound a bit more natural. Okay, the third kind is the electromagnetic style pickup. So you might be thinking a little bit more like an electric guitar now. This kind of pickup is what you would see kind of on a Strat or a Les Paul. The string vibrates and the copper windings produce a voltage that go down the line. Um, the advantages are that you can turn your resonator into a little kind of rocky, you know, kind of rock and roll machine with some effects and distortion and all that kind of stuff. It's a really kind of cool sound. The sort of disadvantage to it, you might say, is that um, in this case, um, I had acoustic strings on this instrument, and the output through the pickup was different for each for different strings. That's because the steel content in the in the unwound strings and the wound strings gives a different output through the pickup. 
Um, so I've put electric strings on. It sounds amazing through the amplifier now, but acoustically, it has lost some of its middle and treble. Um, still sounds great, but it's definitely not what it was. There is a way of using these kind of pickups and combating that unevenness. Crevo do a product, um, Michael Messer does one, there, there are other kind of, of these kind of pickups, National Reservophonic do one, where there are pole pieces which you can adjust with a screwdriver and you can adjust the sensitivity of the pickup to each string. So you could still use an electromagnetic pickup with acoustic strings. Um, that doesn't work for me in this case, but I know people that do that, they get a great sound. And there are other products as well. Uh, National Resophonic do a really cool product, which is called a hot plate. And it's a replacement cover plate like this, which has a, a pickup, volume tone, and the jack socket all built in. It just replaces in. They sound amazing. They're a very quick and easy way of, uh, you know, getting a great uh, sound out of your resonator. So there's the pros and cons. Let's now do some sound tests. Okay then, so to hear this properly, you might want to uh, use some earphones because you might not hear through your phone um, the subtle differences. I'm going to record through this Focusrite uh, stereo recorder into my phone. It gets a pretty nice sound, so it's a good way of uh, figuring out you know, what the differences are. So first up, let's listen to the microphone. I've got the guitar here, the microphone's facing away, so you can hear this unplugged. <laughs> It's, uh, it sounds great. Now let's, uh, let's bring the microphone in. So I have the bows set um, flat, just so you can hear this microphone. I think that sounds pretty damn good. It's just kind of facing kind of the, the cone, edge of the cone, sort of a bit towards the f holes. I was saying before about the kind of the feedback or the low frequencies. The issue is if you move around, the sound changes. Um, and also those different frequencies. So here's the cone. Behind the cone. Now the f holes. Feeding back a bit. So you need to get a good position and kind of stick to it. Sort of uh, just about in front of the guitar, aiming somewhere around here can help. In a recording studio, you'll often record at the 12th fret. That gets a really nice sound. But you've got to stay really still. Okay, second kind, it's the acoustic pickup. Um, let's hear the guitar. Acoustically. Now I'm going to switch the tuner off, so it's going into the PA system. I've got the board set flat. It could probably do with a little bit of bass taking off. I think it's probably just a bit over bassy. Okay, let's just try that. that sounds pretty good, pretty natural, a good kind of halfway house for getting usability and an acoustic sound so you can look all 1930s on stage without any of the other attachments and stuff. You can sort of hide that lead a little bit in the strap and nobody sees it. Okay and last but not least is my rusty 1935 Julian that I use on solo gigs. Um, there it is unplugged. Let's now uh, bring the amplifier into the same volume as the other things. Maybe there. Yeah. Near enough. sound you might use on a gig that is kind of trying to replicate an acoustic sound. It's just the sound of the guitar, fairly natural. 
Um, I was talking earlier about the kind of distortion thing. So there we go, there are the three main pickup types. Now of course this is a, a real oversimplification. There's loads of different variants of preamps, amplifiers, pickup combinations, string types. It's a very complex thing. Um, if you use different systems and it works for you, tell us below because it's always nice to share information and people can use this as a resource. Um, you know, but um, what I'm hoping is that uh, if you're new to this, it's very easy to get confused. I sometimes get confused when I see people uh, online describing their setups and I kind of know a little bit about this stuff and I get confused. So what I'm hoping is this saves you some time and just helps you get to what you think might work for you or sound best for what you want. You know, so you don't have to kiss as many, uh, <laughs> kiss as many frogs on the way to your pickup. Prince or Princess. So thank you very much. The band is the Washboard Resonators. We've been producing a weekly YouTube video because we're in lockdown, we're not allowed out, we can't gig. We're professional musicians normally, you know, we do a lot of gigs. So we thought we'd try and help and share some stuff. We've got loads of information on our channel about uh, guitars, um, body types, history of resonators, all kinds of stuff that we hope really helps people. So uh, do give us a subscribe and comment, it really helps, press the bell icon, and um, get in touch with any issues, we'd love to talk to you, um, Facebook and Instagram, thank you very much, we'll see you all again.